So I'm seeing this go back and forth a little bit. People complaining that Kevin McCarthy is not releasing the January 6th footage, but then he does by giving it to Tucker Carlson. And that's not good enough because Tucker's, Tucker Carlson's a partisan actor and he's not just dumping the footage out. What the people want is for Kevin McCarthy to release the 10,000 plus, I think it's like 16,000 hours of footage from January 6th to let the public go through it. This decentralized investigative network can then figure out what's really going on. Well, of course, the left is particularly perturbed about this. Angry that the most powerful member of the House is handing over January 6th footage to to Tucker Carlson. Now, I don't think it's all that bad. I think mostly good. And we are starting to see some of this footage come out. I don't exactly know if this video from DC Drano is one of the videos that was given to Tucker Carlson, but it shows something interesting. It shows what appears to be a man who is likely some kind of law enforcement or nefarious actor wearing an earpiece, pulling people into the building against their will, and a woman saying, no, you pulled us in. Interesting. Well, here's the tweet from DC Drano. Nothing to see here. Just a guy wearing an earpiece, physically forcing people inside the Capitol on January 6th, and a woman calling him out on it. I'm sure he wasn't a federal agent of any kind. This is why they don't want more video footage released. Well, let me play this video for you, and we'll see what's going on. Here you can see right here. This guy's pulling people in. Stop, stop. No, no. You pushed us in. You were pushing us in. And here's the guy, now seen on the ground from a different angle, wearing an earpiece. The man said she pushed her. The man she said pushed her in was wearing an earpiece. And then Matt Gates said it. Most people believe it. And the only pe- people who are pretending otherwise are those who are going to gain politically from claiming that January 6 was nothing but an insurrection. Or it was exactly an insurrection. Shouldn't say nothing, but they want to hype it up to an extreme degree. Well, you have many others who are trying to be honest, asking the questions about how did this happen? Why did it happen? Who let it happen, if anyone? Why is it that the barricades were pulled down, but on one side, the doors were opened by the police? Well, of course, we're now getting the footage released to Carlson. This is from Axios exclusive. McCarthy gives Tucker Carlson access to trove of January 6 riot tapes. House Speaker McCarthy has given Fox News host Tucker Carlson exclusive access to 40, oh, I was wrong, 41,000 hours of Capitol surveillance footage from the January 6th riot, McCarthy sources tell me. Carlson TV producers were on Capitol Hill last week to begin digging through the trove, which includes multiple camera angles from all over the Capitol grounds. Excerpts will begin airing in the coming weeks. Carlson has repeatedly questioned official accounts on January 6th, downplaying the insurrection as vandalism. And I want want to pause there and just say, okay, good start. What about the rest of us? I want to see this footage given out to the public the same as most other people. I'm not going to sit here and complain. And it's a good thing that at least Tucker's people have it. But I want everyone to get access to it. I want everyone to be able to see what really happened on that day. I mean, don't we own it? Isn't it? Isn't it public record? Carlson told me there was never any legitimate reason for this footage to remain secret. Fair point. Tucker, why don't you do a large data dump on this footage so people can start going through it? And then you, of course, can pull your selects and have your team go through it same as anybody else, amplifying the bigger stories you find. If there ever was a question that's in the public interest to know, it's what actually happened on January 6th. By definition, this video will reveal it. It's impossible for me to understand why any honest person would be bothered by that. They say, reality check, the January 6th committee played numerous excerpts of the footage at last year's captivating hearings. Excuse me? Reality check? I just, I gotta be honest, guys. It's hard for me to look at these stories and keep just going through the same thing every day. We know they're corrupt and we know they're lying. And the challenge is, what benefit is there from me just saying the same thing? They didn't play 41,000 hours of footage. They are purposefully withholding information from January 6th, and that's why people are mad. But you know that. I know that. They know that. Everybody knows. Yet here we are playing this game again. 
I suppose the best thing we can do is try and figure out a way to send this information to younger generations so that when they come uh, come into the voting block, when they're old enough to vote, they don't sit there believing the lies that they're being fed. But it's all about culture, building culture, changing things. That's the way it has to be done. Because these young people are receiving information from cultural institutions, from TV, from video games to YouTube, etc., that hold political messages and assert things to be true. And try as we might with these podcasts and these shows to shed a light on the truth. It's not necessarily going to crack through these institutions and reach the younger generation unless we have a cultural impact. And here's where we are. So everybody's a little bit mad. But the woke left, oh, they're so mad. The New Republic, oh, why are they so mad about this? Look, anybody getting any access to information is a good thing. Uh, In this regard, I mean, about January 6th, the select committee obviously was diehard left and gave us their view. And now we'll get Tucker's view. Will it be perfect? No, they should release it all to the public. But at least now we're getting partisan left, partisan right, right? Nope, they're mad. And I'll tell you why they're mad. They're mad because they want this weaponized. Why is the most powerful member of the House handing over January 6th footage to Tucker Carlson? Kevin McCarthy's decision shows how little he cares about Fox News's longstanding gag on its own viewers. They mention 41,000 hours being sent to Tucker Carlson. Oh, no, but the leftist publication is not having it. McCarthy's treat to the extremist TV host comes as part of the numerous concessions McCarthy made to a select group of far right Republicans in exchange for their speakership votes. He pledged to make all the security footage from January 6th public, which apparently means tying it all up in a bow for Carlson to exclusively and selectively present on his shows to construct conspiracy theories with. Oh, is that is that somehow different from what the uh, January 6th select committee did? Shout out to everyone's fame, uh, favorite Jamie Raskin, who represents some of the employees here at Timcast and is only like a half an hour away from my office who took a clip of me reading a Fox News article and layered it next to people calling for a red wedding to imply I was actively calling for people to go down on January 6th. Fortunately, I was able to write an op-ed for Newsweek calling this out and slamming this guy for being a despicable evil man. And you know, maybe karma's, well, I'll leave it there. Karma, maybe it exists. I'll leave it that way. I think that dude is outright evil. I think he lies, cheats, and steals, and he knows it. Don't drag me in to your crackpot conspiracy theory garbage. Anyway, I'll tell you what I'm really frustrated with and what I'm really mad about. These stories don't progress. The stories are the same old, same old, and it feels like we are trapped in a maelstrom. And I don't feel the progress. I wouldn't call it blackpilling. Certainly things are changing and things are happening. But it just feels like I look online. I see the same stories that I've seen for the past 10 years. I see the same lies, the same manipulations. And I have to wonder, are we making progress? This is the big challenge I see with 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 all of the work that we do, because sometimes it feels like we are trapped in a spiral continually just moving downward. Things tend to degrade, but have have they gotten better? In many ways, they have, certainly. But in many ways, it feels more like the system is, is, is breaking down. And what I see, hard times making strong men. The end result of all of this, I mean, who cares about Oh, they gave it to Tucker. Yeah, well, they gave it to January 6th committee. We get the tribal left outrage. That's not too dissimilar from the right wing outrage. But to be fair, the right deserved their opportunity to analyze and assess the footage the same as the left did, but only the left was able to do it. Now the left is freaking out because the right's doing it. So here's what I see. I see cultural decay. I see even among people that I would consider allies, a thirst for escalation. And I don't mean accelerationism. I don't mean political conflict. I mean something more. Something more that can't be given without extreme hyperbole in the grift. I've been talking about it for the past few weeks. Is it really that big of a deal that Tucker Carlson got this? No. So why is the New Republic angry? Well, for one, they're tribal partisans on the left, but also they need to feign outrage. And we've only seen it it, it escalate, continually getting crazier and crazier. I want to show you uh, this clip from Jimmy Dore, which kind of breaks down something that most of us have known for a long time. AJ Plus, they're a lefty publication. They say 
The FBI paid an informant tens of thousands of dollars to infiltrate racial justice movements during the 2020 Black Lives Matter protests in Denver. To create division, he accused activists of working with the police and set up others to be arrested. What an interesting story that is something that happens all the time and we know about. So let me ask you first, let me read from Jimmy Dore's tweet. He says, this is only shocking to viewers, MSNBC and CNN, who have fully embraced and even worshiped the FBI because they see it as a way to hate on Trump. The FBI is an enemy of democracy, always has been and always will be abolish the FBI. Now, how is it that a leftist publication can come out and say all that violence infiltrators who staged it to generate a narrative to accuse people of terror, etc., etc. And then when it comes to January 6th, when we say much the same thing, the video shows somebody with an earpiece doing something. Someone organized this. Who was it? Who is that man? Why was he not charged? What about Ray Epps? Answer the questions. And they say, you're a dangerous conspiracy theorist. And where are these leftist publications to say, fair point, maybe the goal is to intentionally divide us to make us all fight. Maybe the destruction of the U.S. is the end goal. Marjorie Taylor Greene called for a natural, uh, uh, natural, a national divorce the other day. And James Lindsay said that it was a mistake, that it would lead to the balkanization of the United States, which would then make uh, we would crumble. We would be crushed by the establishment. I mean, think about it. How many people are willing to fight for what they believe in? And this is one of the most demoralizing things I've experienced in the past several months. How many people are willing to commit crimes against the state to, in an effort to protect what they perceive as their rights? I'll tell you, it's quite a lot. It's called Antifa. These people throw firebombs. They smash windows. They cause chaos and destruction, even killing people like Aaron Danielson in Portland for what they perceive as what they're owed, their rights. On the other side, nobody. You know, and the interesting thing is, it's a good thing in a certain light. And what I mean by that is, you know, nobody should be violent. Antifa should not be doing what they're doing. But what they're showing you is the very thing that got the, is, is a statement I will make is that, that is very similar to what got Bill Maher canceled from his show Politically Incorrect. Bill, Bill Maher said the 9-11 terrorists were not cowards because sacrificing your life to do something like that, that's, that's not cowardice. I don't know if he was right, though, to be honest, because zealotry does not, I mean, you can, you can be an ignorant fool and be a zealot and commit something like that. But Antifa people are willing to destroy their own lives now, I hear from people on the right, they say, yeah, but it's because they have organizational power, because big institutions will bail them out. Perhaps that is true. Conservatives are barely willing to send a postcard to, a, to their member of Congress. Now, Donald Trump, things changed. Trump brought in regular working class people, and they were a lot more willing to go out and do things. We saw the rise of the Proud Boys and other Groups, Patriot Prayer, for instance, and they were willing to go out and protest all legally, but they were still demonized and still attacked because, simply put, the institutions in this country know that the far left will burn down your house like they're doing in Atlanta, burning down homes and flipping private citizens vehicles, shooting at cops. They know that. It's scary. And you know what's not scary? A bunch of conservatives. They're going to march around. They're going to obey the law and you got nothing to worry about. So when it comes to the might of the state, the state says, go for the low hanging fruit. We can't stop the lunatics. They're zealots. And in many instances, they've infiltrated institutions in the government. So you get exactly what you'd expect. The the system supports them. It defends them. And don't get me wrong. We know that with this, like with this tweet from Jimmy Dore, the FBI infiltrates protests. So let let me, let me play some of this video for you. Not not all of it, just some of it. Play from the beginning. Hired an informant to infiltrate. The FBI hired an informant to infiltrate the 2020 Black Lives Matter protests, instigate violence, and entrap activists in crimes, according to an investigative journalist. Informant Michael Vindecker was reportedly paid at least $20,000 to spy on protesters in Denver and turn peaceful protests into violent ones. He gained the trust of protesters and eventually became a leader in the movement and accused the real leaders of working with the authorities while also setting up others to be arrested. Trevor Aronson is the host of the podcast Alphabet Boys, which covers how the FBI infiltrated racial justice protests in the summer of 2020. Aronson says the FBI used counterterrorism tactics against protesters. The FBI 
used informants or undercover agents to put together terrorism plots that then they could attract people to be a part of, then foil them and announce to the public a terrorism plot uh, foiled. It had been. Hey, does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar to you? This is something the FBI does all the time. Encourage. I mean, look at the Whitmer case. So why is it? And I, I, honest question, AJ plus that you could have this guy come and say verbatim what people on the right are saying. And this is what breaks my brain. I like Jimmy Dore. I like Jimmy Dore a lot. When are people going to realize the establishment machine hates all of us? It wants us all to be good sheep, to be cogs in the machine as it sacrifices the people of East Palestine and then goes to Ukraine with $500 million. How fast did Joe Biden drop $100 billion on war in Ukraine and we could not get the pipes in Flint fixed? Now, you can argue socialism or capitalism, whatever. You can say that the pipes in Flint should have been fixed by other means. The government shouldn't be involved in this stuff. And I just say, you know what? Fine, whatever. I'm not going to argue. I'm only going to say, why are we spending $100 billion on Ukraine when you could take a microscopic fraction of that money and fix the pipes in Flint, help save other uh, uh, Pittsburgh, Newark? How about this, Hassan? Cure blindness in people who have cataracts, a 10 minute surgery for a few thousand bucks. How is it that the left can acknowledge the FBI is orchestrating these events and then completely ignore January 6th? You know, there was a tweet from the Gravel Institute, and they said that what happened on January 6th was the right thing. Shockingly, it was just the wrong people, because given the chance, these people on the left would absolutely overthrow government and impose their will. And this is the problem I have. I see people on the right. Sometimes they will just tribalistically attack the left, even when it doesn't make sense. But it, it is tends. It tends to be of the left. There is a tendency among the left to reject their own evidence if it if it's bad for the right. To put it simply, When the right comes out and says, hey, we think there were informants and perpetrators working with government agencies on January 6th, they say, no, we hate you. Shut up and we will let the machine crush you. Then at Black Lives Matter rallies, they come out and say the same thing. FBI informants were were orchestrating and making things worse. And you know what the right says? The right to their own detriment says you're probably right. And you know, you know what? You know, it's a problem because if you if you give your your enemies the benefit of the doubt and you excuse their bad behavior because we know FBI, the FBI does this, well, then they'll keep doing it. It's almost like handing the club to your enemy saying, well, you know, you know, you deserve it. Yeah, they're going to hit you with it. And that's what we're seeing now outside of the tribalism, the tribal infighting. I know left and right will get tribal with each other. The end result of all of this, in my opinion, is just we can see it happening. We can see the corruption and the manipulation. We can see the videos showing a man wearing an earpiece, pulling people into the building. Why? Why is he pulling people in? And hold on a minute. That's the door that we previously saw opened despite being mag locked. That's right. Magnetic, electromagnetic seal on that door. A human being could not pull it open. Guys walk up to the door. They look up make a motion, and then someone presses the button and opens the door. I don't know. Maybe it's fake. Maybe these videos are manipulations. This I don't think is fake. But we don't exactly know how the door got opened. We do know in several instances, the police are on camera opening the door and fanning people in. And now we have more video footage. So maybe this is why they don't want anyone to see it, because they're evil. Because Pelosi and other Democrats believe that Innocent people should rot in prison so that they can remain rich and powerful. It's the double edged sword. It is whenever it comes to positions of high power, those who are most willing to be evil tend, they tend to succeed. Not every evil person. And often there is accountability. But you got to understand, my friends, you know, a simple way to explain it is I remember watching a video from a famous YouTuber talking about clickbait thumbnails. Okay, I don't I don't use thumbnails anymore. I only ever used one for my for my for my Timcast channel, but we're changing all that now. And um, he said, look, if I don't do this, no one will watch my videos 
you have no choice. If you want people to watch your video about going surfing, you've got to put a busty woman in the thumbnail and you've got to make it hyperbole. But this is an addiction and it just makes everybody want to escalate things. It makes it so that narratives can run amok, conspiracy theories can run wild, and the truth gets buried in an avalanche of hyperbolic tribal grifting. It's hard to navigate because people want it. People want the righteous indignation and you can choose to give it to them or you can choose not to. But unfortunately, the path to the top, for the most part, requires it. Not completely, and not always, not for everybody. Joe Rogan titles his videos just the name of his guest, and it works out for him. And I'm not saying it's absolute. I'm not trying to be blackpilled here or anything. I'm just saying that there are a lot of people who succeed on lying, cheating, and stealing, pointing out people like Jamie Raskin, lying about me. Why? To suit his agenda, to fit his narrative. I want to know what's going on with January 6th, and I want the truth, and that's all I really want. But more and more as I see these stories, it feels like it's becoming harder to care about it. I think most people don't care about what's happening with the political system right now. It's probably one of the reasons Republicans did not do so well in the midterms, because people have basically walked away and said, just talk to me about movies and culture war stuff. I suppose there's some good in it, because politics is downstream from culture. We'll see what happens as more of this footage comes out. Next segment's coming up probably, I don't know, maybe at four, maybe at six. I don't even know anymore. We'll see what happens. I just might crank out a bunch of videos. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, stay tuned to this channel, and we'll see you all in the next vid.